Hello, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ogbanje Joseph. Please, please, please subscribe to this channel. Share as well as drop a comment on the comment section. Today we are continuing with the Palestinian Israeli crisis and we are, we are going to be looking at the background to the creation of the state of israel okay now don't forget you know that in the discussion to the background you know to this to the conflict between israeli and the arabs particularly the palestinians you know we understand you know from all accounts that in november 1947 the United Nations voted to partition the British mandate of Palestine into a Jewish state and an Arab state. In order to understand this properly, we need to take a look at the United Nations Resolution of 181. That is Resolution 181. The resolution will actually open up, you know, you know, the very you know the events that actually transpired before you know between some of the world leaders in arriving at you know at that decision of partitioning you know the um the british mandate now unfortunately unfortunately due to the vote clashes broke out almost immediately between jews and arabs in palestine Britain, you know, British troop, troops were then sent into the area by, you know, you know, to try to recover some, some sense of sanity in the area. But however, as British troops prepared to withdraw from the Palestine, the conflict continued to escalate with both Jewish and Arab forces committing belligerences. Among the most infamous events was the attack on the Arab British, you know, Arab village of Dar Yassan on the eight, you know, on the 9th of April 1948. This was in fact a watershed in the explosion of the conflict in the area, as the news of a brutal massacre, you know, of the Arab village of Dar spread widely and inspired both panic and retaliation. Days later, Arab forces attacked Jewish convoy headed for Hadassah Hospital, killing 78. As such, the tactics employed here witnessed reprisal attacks, you know, being the order of the day. Okay. Now, however, on the eve of the British forces' intention to withdraw on May 18, 1948, Israel went ahead to declare independence amidst the rising tension in the area. The next day, Arab forces from Egypt, Transjordan, now Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon occupied the areas in southern and eastern Palestine, not apportioned to the Jews by the UN partition of Palestine, and then captured East Jerusalem including the small Jewish quarters of the old city. The presence of these sister Arab nations showed that they were ready to show their support through whatever means to the protection of Palestine. Thus, the stated purpose of the invention, of the invention was to restore law and order in the light of British withdrawal, citing incidences such as you know such as that at Dar Yassin and a growing refugee crisis in neighboring Arab you know countries the Israelis meanwhile won control of the main road to Jerusalem through Yehuda mountains that is the hills you know the hills of Judea and successfully repulsed repeated Arab attacks by early 1949 the Israelis had managed to occupy all of the Negev 
up to the former Egypt-Palestine frontier, except for the Gaza Strip. Between February and July 1949, there was an amistice agreement between Israel and each of the Arab states, as have been mentioned above. Due to this, a temporary frontier was fixed between, you know, between Israel and her neighbors. It is important for you to note that in Israel, the war is remembered as its war of independence. In the Arab world, it came to be known as the Nagba catastrophe because of the large number of refugees and displaced persons resulting from the war. Now, we are going to take a very critical look at, you know, at the war of uh, independence. What happened during the war of independence? That's exactly what we are going to be looking at right now. Now, don't forget, okay, that, you know, immediately after the proclamation of independence, okay, Israel, that is immediately after the proclamation of Israel, the, Mal the Zionist militias gained the upper hand over the Palestinian through skill and pluck, aided considerably by intra-Arab rivalries. Israel's, you know, Israel's declaration of independence on May 14, 1948 was quickly recognized by the United Nations, you know, by the United Nations, United States, and of course, the Soviet Union, and many other gov governments fulfilling the Zionist dream of an internationally approved Jewish state. Neither the UN nor the world leaders, however, could spare Israel from immediate invasion by the armies of the five Arab states. And which are these five Arab states? I am talking about Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, and Transjordan, now Jordan. And within a few days, the state survivor appeared to be at stake. You know, the Israeli forces desperately short of arms and training still had the advantage of having just beaten our Husseini's irregular and irregulars and their morale was high. David Ben Gurion, the new prime minister, had also soon after independence unified the military command, although this process was bloody. When an Egun ship called the Atalena attempted to land near Tel Aviv in June 1948 under conditions unacceptable to Ben Gurion, he ordered it stopped. He ordered it stopped. Okay, troops commanded by Yitzhak Rabin fired on the vessel, killing 82 people. Okay, now the Egon and Palmak finally consented to the unified command, but relations between the labor movement, okay, that is Ben, uh, you know, that Ben Gurion had had established, and its right wing opposition founded in Jabos, Jabos Risky Revisionist Party was poisoned, you know, was poisoned for wars. The Arab invaders, you know, far outnumbered the Zionists, but fielded only a few well-trained units. In addition, some Arabs, some Arab logistical lines were, you know, were long making resupply and communication difficult. The most formidable Arab force, you know, Arab force was Transjordan's British-led Arab Legion. But the, the Jordanian ruler, that is King Abdullah, had, had, secret, had secret relations with the Zionists and strongly opposed a Palestinian state led by his enemy, Al Husseini. Other states such as Egypt and Iraq also had different objectives and this internal strife, disorganization and military ineptitude prevented the Arab from mounting a 
coordinated attack. Small numbers of Arab of Israeli forces were able to keep Egyptian, Iraqi, and Jordanian units from entering Tel Aviv and cutting off Jerusalem from the rest of the newly founded country during the crucial first month of the war. In June, all sides accepted the UN ceasefire and the nearly exhausted Israelis re-equipped themselves, sometimes from the secret sources, you know, sometimes from the secret sources. Notable was the clandestine effort by the Soviet dominated Czech Republic, which offered Israel both arms and an airfield, you know, and an airfield, you know, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin had decided that the Jewish state might be, might be a useful turn in the side of Britain and the United States, his Cold War enemies. Forces fighting, you know, fierce fighting resumed in early July and continued for months interspersed with brief truces. The Israelis drove, you know, drove back the Egyptian and Iraqi forces that menaced the south and central parts of the coastal plain. However, the old world city of Jerusalem continued the Western Wall, the last remnant of the ancient temple, you know, of the ancient temple destroyed by the Romans, okay, and held holy by Jews, was occupied by the Jordanians, and Jerusalem's lifeline to the coast was jeopardized. The Egyptians held Gaza, and Syrians, you know, and the Syrians entrenched entrenched themselves in the Golan Heights overlooking Galilee. In 1948, in the 1940, the 1948 war was Israelis costliest, costliest, more than 6,000 were killed and 30,000 wounded, you know, out of a population of only 780,000 as at that time. So the war, the crisis, the conflict has been on ground since the 1948 when Israel actually declared her independence, okay? The United Nations, as well as the Western world, had always supported the Israeli, you know, the Israeli parts, okay? Now, yes, that is what they have always wanted in order to compensate them, you know, for the Holocaust that they actually experienced, okay, during the Second World War. However, the war in Palestine, between the, between Hamas and Israel and Israel is actually something that is intolerable. It is something that the United Nations, as well as the Western world, including you know the superpowers and each side of the divide, must come together to actually find a lasting peace, because you no know, peace is priceless. You know, peace is priceless. You know, as it is said, when two elephants fight, you know, it is the grass that suffers. Okay? Now it is, you know, the soft targets. I'm talking about the civilians, children, women, and innocent people are the ones actually suffering, suffering, you know, the untold hardship and the catastrophe that is actually going on in the Middle East right now. So the United Nations does not have any any choice than to rally round the both countries i'm talking about palestine and israel to ensure that they broke up peace between the two countries thank you very much